What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to be talking about Elastic Beanstalk and running containers. Yeah, exciting stuff. Honestly, it really is because this is the part where most people I'm pretty sure are like, let me just upload my code. And this is what we're going to be talking about. Now, we're actually in the middle part of the ship and it falls under the label of platform as a service or a pass. And although you still provide the code, AWS will do more of the work of managing servers so you don't have to get your hands dirty in the engine room while connecting directly to service to servers to update the operating system and running terminal commands to configure new services and junk like that. You don't have to worry about that anymore. One of the first services we're going to be talking about, like I said in the beginning, is Elastic Beanstalk. Now, before we actually get into the platform as a service section and even beyond that, some of this may seem like you're just clicking in a few buttons, you upload your code and magic happens. Your app just starts working, right? But behind the curtain, AWS is still using the same EC2 instances, storage and network components we've already explored in the past videos. So if you haven't seen those, please check those out. You will not see any of this. In fact, you're only going to be messing around in a small platform. We'll get into that later on. But when you're actually troubleshooting problems or architecting new solutions to run on these higher platforms and can help to think about how all of this is going to wire together and run on virtualized infrastructure as a service layer that it, that it sits on. So Elastic Beanstalk is great if you have a single code base for your project and you just want to give AWS your code and let them do more of the work of managing the servers and the operating system updates. Underneath the hood, like we've said, it's still EC2 servers, but it's it's great for developers that, you know, don't have the time or just don't want to, you know, mess around in the engine room. Now, there are some trade-offs to this architecture that AWS proposes, right? Obviously, you already know, man, having such a great thing, there's always going to be some trade-offs. And one of those would be like, Let's say you're, you're you're using WordPress, right? You can't update WordPress using the WordPress admin. So there are some docs that tell you about this. And here's the where over here. Here's the docs, and right here it gives you all the like Elastic Bean for Linux platforms. You know, um, .NET, Java, PHP, Python, and they have a Ruby. They, I know they have Node.js. I don't know where it's at. Oh, here it is. Working with Node.js. You know, so. They do have some stuff. I would reckon I would recommend you guys to read these things because, like I said, there are some trade-offs, and you should need to know what those trade-offs trade-offs are. Now, some of you might have messed with uh, GoDaddy or Bluehost, and you've seen the small platform in the beginning, like I mentioned, that we're going to talk about, where you just you know pick your hosting plan. Let me actually show you, and it's called LightCell. This is this is Amazon's LightCell is AWS service, and you've seen this before, where you just like pick, hey. Uh, where do you want the location? What do you want it to be? You select your platform. You want it on Windows or a Linux? Okay. Well, what do you want to do right now? Well, I want to create a Node.js application. Okay. And it gives you all the price. You know, it's it's a pretty much pick and choose and just go create instant. That's it. Now, if you actually outgrow the limitations of LightCell, by the way, this is called LightCell. If you grow the limitations of light cell, it's got a uh, built-in upgrade path for your site that'll transition you to your own EC2 instance if you decided in the future that you'd like to move your site back down to the engine room and control more of it yourself. So that's basically it for Elastic Beanstalk. Just just notice that Elastic Beanstalk over here, this had, like I said, we're going to create one. You just put your application name and you choose your platform, you know, Node.js, Go, Docker, you know, whatever you want, and then create application. And it'll do, oh, right here, upload your code. Look at that. And you just choose the code or the file that you want to upload. And that that's basically it. It'll read that and you're pretty much done. You might need to do some little bit of configuration in the server side, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, let's actually get on to let's move on to running uh containers on aws so containers can be can be used to take a large monolithic single application and break its features down into smaller microservices that can be easy to scale monitor and maintain so instead of having a large monolithic application let's say you have microservice containers that handles 
signups for your application, maybe one that handles payments for your application and another one that handles reports for your application. Okay. Now, if you're actually new to the world of containers or you've, you've only briefly heard of technologies like Docker, you could think of a container like a mini virtual machine, although it's technically not a virtual machine like your EC2 instance. And don't get me wrong. People will tell you, Hey, it's not a virtual machine because it's not. Uh, you could actually imagine it like a computer, like a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, a Raspberry Pi where all of your application software dependencies and library are already installed and configured. Things like Node.js and Python. And all your code is already set up. And just by saying plugging it into your container host, your, your app immediately starts and runs with no setup on your part. Now, <laughs> AWS has gone crazy and i'm i'm talking about they've gone crazy on containers and they've have several platforms to help you host your containers but the most popular service that they have is called elastic container service or ecs so let's actually get into that right now let's go back to my uh ecs where is it at? elastic container service now, similar to RDS and Elastic Beanstalk, ECS will control EC2 instances for you so you don't have to worry about setting up your own clusters and doing a bunch of server administration tasks so you can just focus on your containers and creating a microservice code architecture. Now, obviously containers, oh, well, not obviously for most people, but containers are spawned from a container image that has to be hosted from a repository like Docker Hub, which is like Git for containers. Now they do have a service which is called Elastic Container Registry that gives you it it gives you a a place to put, put your container images but you can still use other registry services like Docker Hub if you like. Now containers can be configured in two different ways and I need to pull this up so that way you could actually see what I'm talking about or I guess understand more what I'm talking about. It could, it could configure in two different ways. You can stash your entire web server into a container like Node.js, And when you launch that container, you'll want that container to continuously run so that the web server can listen for incoming traffic and returns responses. Or you can have a container that only performs a single task. And when it's done, it stops executing. This could be a container that, you know, starts up and pulls in an image, then it does some resizing on it and then writes it out, writes out the process image and it exits. It's pretty simple. So when you actually set up your container, you do need to define some task definitions. And these are the two things that I'm talking about. If you have a workloads that need to run continuously, select the EC2 instances you know, which will spawn some EC2 instance for you and control them via the EC2 council, not EC2 council, the ECS council, Elastic Container Service Council, just in case you didn't know what ECS still means. Um, if you have workloads that execute once and then are done until called again, you need to select the Fargate. Now, these things, uh, the uh, Elastic Beanstalk and running containers on Navy. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make another series on this. Cause yeah, it's, I know for a fact people do use it. So I'm going to go in more depth into this. So just look for that. I am going to do another series on this, on how to do this part anyways. So that is, that's, I don't even know why, why, why I stuttered like that. So that's basically it for this video guys. Um, we went over Elastic Beanstalk and how to actually create a simple application, you know, using that small platform that they give you where you just choose and pick. And we we talked about uh, running containers and how to actually do that. Well, not really how to do that. It's just what, what can be done with it, right? So that is it, guys. And thank you so much for watching this video. I know, I know we're not doing nothing much. We're not actually, you know, writing code or anything like that, but... Trust me, if you learn AWS, you will have a higher chance of getting a job. I'm, I'm doing this because a lot of companies use not AWS per se, but they do use a a service of, of for Google or AWS. I'm only doing AWS because I know AWS, but 
yeah, they use services from these top companies and you will want to have AWS on your resume. And don't worry, guys, I'm not I'm not going to try to prepare you. I'm not going to say, oh, you're going to be the hired. No, no, it will give you a leg up. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something today. Um, like the video, subscribe and comment down below. And I will see you in the next in the next uh, video where we talk about Lambda and batch processing. So see you until then, which probably be tomorrow. <laughs> and thank you guys.